Hi folks, as a lot of you people know, I make my YouTube videos on my GoPro Hero. Now I've got the 7 at date, but I've just upgraded now to the 10. I'm just going to unbox it, have a look at it and tell you my reasons as a YouTuber as to why I've upgraded. Right, so I have been hanging on for quite a while. Uh, I didn't go up to the 9 for the simple reason being that the reason why I chose the 7 uh, was the image stabilisation. That's why I went from the 5 to the 7, because the 5 didn't have any image stabilisation whatsoever. And sometimes you have to pick the camera up and move it about. Very hard to get still images while doing that. And in on the 7, they introduced the image stabilisation, which I've been using fine. And it is okay, it's acceptable. I didn't upgrade to the 8, nor the 9, but now the 10's come out. I've read a few reviews on it, and the main two reasons why I upgraded was one, it's got this front camera, which the Hero 7 doesn't have, because whenever you're framing yourself up on the, uh, a GoPro from a different perspective, like from where you are, for example, you can't see what's in the camera or what's being viewed, because the view LCD screen is behind the camera. And I know you can get an app on your phone, your smartphone, which you can have, but that's just another bit of faff. So I didn't go down that road. So that was one of the reasons why I upgraded. I nearly done it on the nine, but um, I hung on because there wasn't too much difference between the seven and the nine with regards to the other upgrades. But from the seven to the 10, there was enough upgrade for me to jump ship from the seven and get the 10 because this thing has got a lot faster processor apparently if you wanted to do higher resolution stuff as well. And the menu scroll, scrolling on the menu is far superior as well. And also this has got the HyperSmooth version four, whereas the nine had the HyperSmooth version three, which is a big upgrade from the seven, I know, but the 10 is the one I feel is the one where I wanted to upgrade from the seven. It was a lot, lot of stuff which I really wanted. Because there's a few things you probably will need to know if you've been watching a few review videos. I'm not a techie, and I know that if you do read between the lines sometimes, you can satisfy yourself that it's gonna do what you want. A lot of the reviews I've read on this saying that very, very poor battery life, and also it gets hot. Now, that's no good for me, bearing in mind my seven works faultlessly. But reading in between the lines, the difference between the seven and this is that this can operate at 5.3K, and a lot of cameras that operate at 5.3K are, are, are bigger cameras. In other words, they've got the facility to dissipate the heat more. Well, you'll always have in a small body camera like this, nowhere really for the heat to go, and that's why they get hot. That's only if you're using them to their maximum resolution, and that's where the battery life fails as well, comes right down because the camera's really working hard. That, that sort of resolution is not really akin to these sort of small cameras. So, but bearing in mind, I don't use my GoPro nowhere near that resolution. I use mine at 1080p, and the battery life on my GoPro 7 is sufficient, and it never, ever gets hot. So this has got far, far more capabilities, yes, but I'm never gonna use it at its full capabilities, 5.3K, and as a result of that, I now know that this was a, a, a good upgrade for me to get. But if you read the reviews, you wouldn't touch this with a barge pole because they're all saying the same thing, that it gets too hot and the battery life's a crap. So that's not what I also wanted. One thing that put me off of the GoPro 10, as compared to my 7, is that if you buy it online, it's a lot of money. But if you buy it via the GoPro, and by the subscription, you can bring the cost down 100 pounds. I think the GoPro subscription to their website and their cloud or whatever is about 54 pound a year, something like that, 53 pound a year. I may be wrong, uh, so don't quote me on that figure. And I didn't want to go down the road of getting subscribed to something which I was never ever gonna use. All I do is download my footage from my GoPro, plug it into my PC and download the footage directly onto my PC, edit it, and then I'll get rid of all the other footage and just keep the, the edited version. So for me to, to opt in, you could say, to the cloud settings and also the, um, the other things that come with that wasn't really of an interest to me. But I didn't want to have to spend an extra £100. And what I did find out, and this is what made me go for the subscription base, I paid the subscription price, was that with a subscription annually, you're pretty much covered if your GoPro goes wrong. Now, I've had a GoPro go wrong in the past and it was out of warranty, and as a result of that, I, I didn't get no feedback or warranty, and I had to, that was a GoPro Hero 5 that I had. The firmware wouldn't update, and it crashed, and I had to destroy it. 
and that was the end of it. There was, there was no all coming, coming back. So once it had gone, it had sort of had a built-in obsolescence, whereas the, the hardware wouldn't update, and there's nothing else I could do. So that became redundant. Now with the 10, if you take on the subscription, this is something which I don't think is pushed enough, and I don't think, really think they want too many people to know about it, is that if something goes wrong with this in that year that you've been a, or you, you've subscribed, you can send this back, and they will give you a new camera. Not once, they will do it twice a year. So you've got two warranty claims in any year of having the subscription where you can send this back and they'll send you a replacement. That to me is worth the warranty. That is worth me signing up for the subscription. I'm not interested in the cloud upload, but for that only, I've chose to go with the subscription and paid the annual subscription because that to me is worth, worth more than any cloud update or whatever like that. You've also got the firmware updates, which you can update on the website at any time. So why did I upgrade from the 7 to the 10? Well, the 7 was good because that was groundbreaking. As I said to you, from my 5, which had no image stabilisation, the 7 had image stabilisation. I didn't upgrade from the 7 to the 9 because they had, that's when they introduced the HyperSmooth version 3 image stabilisation. I've upgraded now to the 10 because this has got HyperSmooth 4.0 image stabilization. So that's one good reason. The second reason is my GoPro 7, I can't see when I'm sitting in front of it, the actual screen, whereas this thing has got a front facing camera as well as a rear facing camera, and we can now see what we're filming uh, when we're looking at the camera. The Hero 10, this one, has also got Gorilla Glass, which is a toughened glass, which I do find helps because I have had scratches on my other GoPro cameras, although the lenses are interchangeable on my 7, the 8, the 9, and the 10, I think you'll find. But the 10 is a Gorilla Glass, which is a toughened glass, and it's also got a hyperphobic coating. Now, what that means is, is that if you get rain on it or water on it, it will run off and leave the screen clear. Many a time I've had on my GoPro 7, that if I, when I've been filming outside, rain's dropped on it and it's right on the lens and you don't realise it and at the end of the day you've got that big blurry water patch in the front. So with the hydrophobic glass, I think it's hydrophobic glass, you don't tend to get that. This apparently has got better low light capabilities due to the faster processor. And if you're taking pictures on this as well, the picture quality is vastly superior as well. Not that I do take pictures on mine because whenever I do take pictures, I take them on my smartphone and then put them into my videos that way. But you can take excellent pictures with the GoPro as well. And it's also got a brand new processor in it, which is a lot faster. And as a result of that, I think when they do update the firmware, as this camera progresses with the new processor, it will take it a lot better. And the menu scrolling on the back is a lot smoother as well, apparently, as the new layout of the menu as well. So there we go. So that's what I've got here. That's the new GoPro 10. So I've not even opened this yet. This is what my wife, my wife bought me for my birthday. So I'll just open it now for the first time. And uh, I'll probably be start using this because it's nearly my birthday anyway. So we'll take the outer package in off. Let's open it up here. And it does come in a lovely little presentation case, as you can see there. But you get the um, USB lead for the charge in there. You get a, an adhesive mount there. You get the new type batteries, which I can't use with my GoPro Hero 7, but that's not a problem. So, and they're also larger as well, so they should last a lot longer. Bearing in mind, I'll be using this at 1080p as well. You get another clip-in uh, mount. You also get the little uh, control knob for that as well. The phone, uh, the, the camera itself, let's just put that to the side. This is just a cardboard insert. This is it, this is the little GoPro, this is what I've been waiting to see. It's physically bigger than the um, 7 which I've got. And as you can see there, you've got the new front facing screen on it there, which is going to be really handy. And it's also got this um, mount which is built in, the other one doesn't have that the one I've got. So you've actually attached this I gather. And as I say, they give you a little stick on mount, not that I'll be using that, that looks like some sort of helmet cam mount because it's got a curve on it. But I won't be using that, I'll be sourcing the other one. But that's, that, that's the uh, camera. I won't turn it on yet, as I say, because I'm going to um, charge the battery up fully and I'm going to do the firmware update to it as well, so that it's fully up to date. You do that on the website. I've also bought the medium mod, 
Now it says nine on there, but also says there with a stick at 10 as well. Now the medium mod is a carrying cradle because I don't tend to use my GoPro like this. I put it in a cradle. So let me take that back off again. Fold them little tabs over there. And let's undo this medium mod kit. Now the reason why I chose this is because sometimes I want to film outside without me Rode Wireless Go mic on. I'm wearing a Rode Wireless Go wireless mic under my top, which you probably can't see, but gives you a better quality of sound. This is the medium mod cradle. Let's put that to the side. And I chose this because it is GoPro compatible and it is a GoPro mod. The ones I've got on my GoPro Hero 7 is a Yolanzi cradle, which means that I can hold a light above there and also my remote GoPro receiver on the top as well. So this is the medium mod and it comes with its own built-in speaker as well as they give you this wind muff which goes over the side of the microphone and also stops you getting that wind noise. So that's a great thing which I've uh, really wanted to have. And this fits over your GoPro. Right, I see. So it's got a little clip on it there which you uh, basically pull down on and that opens up like that. So that's the media mod out. And all you literally do now, I think you have to take the side door off of your camera, which pulls down the same way. You pull down and out and that just clips back and pulls off, I take it. There we go, so that just pulls off there. And your medium mod, or your camera, literally pushes in sidewards, like that, and clips in there, and then you push the side down. And I don't think, in that mode, I don't think that it's 100% waterproof anymore. It'd be ideal for going outside filming in the rain, for example, but I wouldn't trust that underwater because you've taken the waterproof casing off of that side. But that to me is providing a great little setup there now for when I want to get more ambient sounds coming through my GoPro via this mic here, and I want to get other people mic'd up because my Rode, guide, uh, my Rode Wireless Go is a one-to-one -one person setup. So there we go, I quite like that. And it still has access underneath to put your tripod mount on. You can buy different ones obviously to go on your camera like that. So that's that there. And what I've also purchased as well which is something that we all have if we've got GoPros, is I've also got their dual battery charger set up. Again, these are genuine GoPro batteries, which they suggest using for the GoPro, which I've actually got as well. There'll be no problems with this overheating because I only use it at 10, when I say only, 1080p is uh, the standard which I've been uploading at. I may go up to 2.4K in the future just to increase things, but that again puts a larger strain, not on your camera, but on your processing, editing processing when you're using it on your PC and also your upload, to, uh, upload speeds may be longer as well. But now I've got the facility to charge both of these batteries in one go as well. So that again to me was a handy mod. Always best to have two batteries, one as a backup. And there you go, folks. That's the reasons why I have chosen the GoPro Hero 10 over the seven which I've already been filming with for the improved hyper smooth stabilization. It's got Gorilla Glass on it with a hydroscopic coating which helps when I'm out working in the rain. I was able to purchase this cradle which gives me greater capability to filming outside when other people's voices are necessary using the medium mod there. And the biggest thing which, that sold it to me was the front facing camera as, the, as well as the back facing camera. And me as a YouTuber who's on the move doing stuff, mo moving about, that to me were the main reasons why I've upgraded over the Hero 7 which I'm currently using. So anyway, there you go. It's not really a review, but it's just my reasons in a real world scenario as to why I have chosen to upgrade to the Hero 10. Don't go worrying about the length of the battery life and also the thing getting hot. If you're using it like I am on 1080p or even 2.4K, it will never ever get hot in those circumstances. So anyway, hope you found this video useful and don't forget to check out my other review videos and also the other content on my channel where I restore motorcycles, lawnmowers, cars, new car repairs, all that sort of stuff. Or maybe even check out my Butler's Empire channel uh, where you can see my family stuff which I, we get up to on a daily basis. Anyway, thanks very much folks. See you in the next video and until then, bye for now.